Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this, what to do when serving God sucks. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through. I know that God is going to bless your life and I know that this video is going to be a great encouragement. And also do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. So let's jump right into it. What's the theme? What to do when serving God sucks. So what's the question? What to do when serving God sucks? This is what you need to do. You need to stay committed. I want to tell you a story of a man named Silas. A lot of people have heard about this man because he's in a story, very famous story in the Bible with the Apostle Paul. But before I tell you the famous story that everybody knows about, and it shows us the perfect example of what we need to do when serving God sucks, when serving God isn't always the most favorable times, or when it's putting us through difficult situations, or trials, or rejections, or mistreatings, right, because of our faith. Before I tell you that story, I want to tell you a little bit about Silas. Something about Silas that a lot of people don't know about, but the book of Acts tells us, is that Silas was a prophet. Now, this is important for us to know and understand because Silas later becomes a disciple and he becomes somebody who's under the authority of the Apostle Paul. Now, this is important. Why? Because he used to be a leader in the Jerusalem council. He's a prophet and he was a prophet and a leader in the Jerusalem council, Silas. But somewhere along the way in the book of Acts, the Bible tells us that Silas goes with Paul and Barnabas on a missionary trip and he sees how everybody's being saved, the Gentiles. And he sees how the gift of the Holy Spirit is falling upon the Gentiles and how the gospel is spreading. And that grabbed Silas's attention and that touched Silas's heart. And Silas felt a calling to follow Paul and Barnabas and follow them in their ministry. And remember, he was a prophet. He was an elder in the Jerusalem council. He had a good, comfortable place where he was at and where he was serving God. But later he felt a call of God to follow Paul and Barnabas in the missionary journey, in the missionary field. Now, why is this important? Because as he was following Paul, tough times came. As he was following Paul, difficult situations showed their head. As he was following Paul, he went through some scary nights. As he was following Paul, he literally went through physical sufferings. Now, what to do when serving God sucks. We're going to learn this from the life of Silas. What do we need to do? This is what we need to do. We need to stay committed. We need to stay committed. Let's learn the commitment that Silas had and let's be encouraged by the word of God. Look what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 18 through 26. But before we begin to read, I want to tell you the background of the story. The Apostle Paul and Silas, they're in the missionary journey. They're in the missionary field. And the Bible says that they're on their way to pray one day at a temple, right? They're on their way to pray to the Lord. But the Bible says that as they're on their way to pray, now this is very interesting, the Bible says that a demon-possessed woman meets them. And the Bible says that this demon-possessed woman was a fortune teller. And the people who owned her became very rich because of the demon possession that she had. She was able to save fortunes. And she would charge money and her owners were very rich. So the Bible says that one day she sees Paul and she sees Silas and she says, these men are servants of the most holy God. These men are doing a great work. And the Bible says that she did this for many days. And look what happens. This is where we jump in. Verse 18. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour, meaning that very moment. So things are going great. Silas is seeing miracles. Silas is following Paul. They're preaching with authority. But remember, what's the theme of the video? What to do when serving God sucks. What are we supposed to do when the going gets tough? Right here, the going's not getting tough. Right here, everything's going pretty good. The demon was cast out. This woman was set free. But look what happens. Look at the storm that Silas and Paul go through. And look what we can learn from this. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, remember they made a lot of money from her. Now they couldn't make no money because the demon was out. She wasn't going to be able to fortune tell anymore. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, 
these men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders that they be beat with rods. And when they have inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So Paul and Silas weren't doing anything bad. They were just going to church. They were just going to pray. The demon possessed woman approached them. All they did was cast the demon out of this woman. But what happened? The Bible says that the love of money is the root of many kinds of evil. When the owners of this woman saw that they could not make any more money from this woman because the demon had been cast out by Paul and Silas, they became angry and they started bringing up all these accusations against them. And they started making all these false cases against them. And the Bible says that they grabbed them. First of all, look at that. Look at the disrespect. Sometimes as Christians, we're going to go through situations like this where we feel disrespected. Now, it might not be like Paul and Silas that were physically grabbed, but maybe somebody might disrespect you. and You might feel like your spirit is grabbed or your emotion is grabbed or your joy is grabbed or your peace is grabbed, right? You feel like, you feel like the joy you have was taken from you. Okay, that's going to happen sometimes. The Bible says that they grabbed them, took them to the city square, the Bible says they started bringing all these false accusations against them, making all these false cases against them. And then the Bible says that the magistrates tore their clothes off. Can you imagine? They were on their way to church to go pray. Can you imagine? What if that was some clothes that a friend had bought them? What if that was some clothes that a, a family member had bought them? What if that was some clothes that somebody bought them and, you know, it was an emotional attachment to them and it was ripped like nothing? The people ripped it like nothing. I'm showing you something. As Christians... Sometimes we're going to go through situations where our emotions are affected, where our joy is affected, where our happiness is affected, where maybe even just like Paul and Silas, our physical belongings are affected. But look what Paul and Silas do. Not only do they get their clothes ripped off, like the disrespect, the, the, the no care for their personal boundaries, they, the people didn't care, tore their clothes. Not only that. But the Bible says that they grabbed rods and beat them. Now, the custom of that time was if somebody was beat with the rods, it was around 39 times. And it wasn't no light little beating. It wasn't no light little hit. It was hard. It was a punishment. And they got whooped 39 times, at least 39 times. And what were they doing? They were just on their way to church. They weren't doing nothing wrong. They were just on their way to church and they were going to go pray. Isn't that how you feel sometimes? Like, man, I'm just trying to serve God. I'm just trying to live for the Lord. I just want to do right. I just want to live for the Lord. Can't I just have a moment of calm? Can't I just have a moment of peace? Can't I just have a good day? Why does it seem like everything's always going bad every single day? Well, Paul and Silas were going through situations like that. Not only were their clothes ripped, not only were they beat at least 39 times, but the Bible says they threw them into jail. Right after being beat, I want you to imagine bruises on them, cuts on them, scrapes on them. Who knows the bruises and the cuts that they had because of those beatings. They threw them in jail like nothing. They didn't even put a band-aid a band on them. They didn't even put Neosporin at least on them. None of that. They didn't take care of the wounds. They just threw them into prison. And if you hear what I was reading, the Bible says that they threw them into the inner part of the prison. What does that mean? The darkest part. The darkest part. As a Christian, that's how it's going to seem sometimes in our life. Like we're going after trial after trial, after suffering, after suffering, and then it's going to seem like we're ending up in the darkest part of our life. But look what the Bible says. After they were beat, after their clothes was ripped, after they were thrown into prison, the Bible says that they also put bondages on their feet. The Bible says that they put them in stocks. Like, man, now I'm never going to get out of here. Now I'm never going to be set free. After trial, after trial, after trial, after trial, but look what we can learn from Paul. Look what we can learn from Silas. Look what we can learn when serving God sucks. Look what they did. Look at the commitment they had. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. What were they doing after being beat? After having their personal belongings torn? What were they doing after having stocks on their ankles and chains on their hands? What were they doing? Praying and singing songs to God. Where were they on their way to before that demon-possessed woman appeared to them? They were on their way to go pray and to go sing. What happened? They were beat. 
Their clothes was ripped. They were thrown into jail, into the deepest, darkest part of the jail. But what are they doing? Hey, we were on our way to church to pray and to sing to the Lord. And we're in jail. But what are we going to do? We're still going to pray and we're still going to sing to the Lord. What can we learn from Paul and Silas? They were committed. They weren't committed to the good days. They weren't committed to cake and ice cream. They weren't committed to beautiful butterflies and seasons of just beautiful things. No, they were committed to the Lord. I want to tell you, when you go through a difficult time, when you go through a difficult situation, the thing that's going to help you go out through that valley of the shadow of death, the way the book of Psalms chapter 23 says, what's going to help you come out of that valley of the shadow of death is your commitment to God. When you stay committed to the Lord, Jesus said this, in this world, you will have sufferings. But fear not, for I am with you, and I have already overcome the world. You know, when the people were walking through that valley of the shadow of death, who let them out of that valley? The shepherd. Because remember how Psalm 23 starts? The Lord is my shepherd. The only one that can take them through that valley was the shepherd. If they would have not followed the shepherd, they would have got stuck there. Paul and Silas, they were going through the valley of the shadow of death. Just like many Christians go through these situations, they might feel like this, like, man, I can't catch a break. I just can't have a good day. And they might feel like Paul and Silas, like if they're shackled up, but what were they doing? They stayed committed. And they said, we might have not been able to make it to church, but even right here where we are, we're still going to have church. Because remember, church is not a building. Church is not a physical location. Church is a group of believers who gather together to serve the Lord, to pray, to sing to the Lord. That's church right there. When two or more gather in my name, the Bible says, I am there, says the Lord. So the Bible says that they began to pray. They began to sing songs to God. And the Bible says why this was going on. The Bible says that the prisoners were listening to them. I want to tell you, as you're serving God and you're going through your trials, you're going through situations, I want to tell you that people are looking at you and they're seeing how you're reacting. And not only that, but when the Lord brings you out, because the Lord will bring you out, when you come out of that valley, When you come out of those stocks, when you come out of that suffering, because you will come out. That's the promise of the Lord. You will come out. The Bible says, I've never seen the king's children forsaken. I've never seen the righteous begging for bread. You will come out. When you come out, you're going to be a great testimony. Look what happens. Paul and Silas were singing. They were praying. And look what happens. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfolded. Fastened. What happened? Because Paul and Silas were committed to the Lord. What happened? Because Paul and Silas said, you know what? I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to worship the Lord. What happened? The Bible says that the earth shook. And the Bible says that the doors were open. And the bonds fell off of not just Paul and Silas. Fell off of everyone that was in the jail. What does this symbolize for us today? When you serve the Lord. And when you're going through situations that are not the most pleasant. But you stay committed to the Lord. Not only will you see the victory of God, but other people will also be able to experience the freedom and victory of God through your testimony. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. What to do when serving God sucks? Stay committed. Learn from Paul and Silas. Even in the hard times, keep living that life of prayer. What does that mean? Keep seeking the Lord. Keep singing those songs. What does that mean? You keep knowing that God is good no matter what. And what's going to happen? The Bible says that you will see the victory of the Lord. Just like Paul and Silas saw it, you're going to see it too. And not just you are going to experience the victory, but other people are also going to be able to experience the victory and freedom because of the testimony that you showed them. So I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if this video bless you, press the like button because the more people that press the like button helps this video reach more people. And that's what it's all about reaching people for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. So what do you do when serving God sucks? You stay committed and you will see, the Bible promises us, you will see the victory of the Lord in your life. And not only you, but other people also. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I know that there will be a great blessing to your life. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing.